Okie dokie, I believe we are all the way being recorded. Hello and welcome to my graveyard. I am your host of the evening, the Cemetery Man from Salem, Mass. Always taking names of kicking candy ass. Live in the color here with you on Grande's Graveyard. And I know weird impromptu video. I don't usually do these, especially pre-recorded ones. But what the what pretty much what happened was this week on Grande's Graveyard, I was supposed to be doing a Spanish horror special. I was going to be focusing on the films of Narcisco Abanez Cerrador. Um, and unfortunately what happened was my Blu-ray of who can kill a child got back ordered and I can't do the show this week on that particular topic. However, I did get the arrow edition of this little gem right here, the house that screamed. This was his first feature film. And I figure I go ahead and I do a Blu-ray spotlight video just to kind of, to something to tide you over, if you will, Mr. Mr. Danson and fucking Leslie Nielsen will nod to you guys in creep show there, but I wanted to do a brief little spotlight video. I've done a couple of these. I did one on the Hills Have Eyes 4K. I did one on the Ringu collection. I always, always love how Arrow packages their stuff. They're my favorite Blu-ray company that's in the game. Best blue teak label out there, in my humble opinion. And it's all because of the packaging. And I usually, nine times out of ten, think they release the best stuff as well. I, no, no disrespect to Vinegar Syndrome. No disrespect to Severin. No disrespect to, well, disrespect to Shout Factory because they're a bunch of pussies, let's be honest. I just don't think anybody comes close to beating Arrow, and that's why I figured I was like, you know what, if I can't do the show on this this week because I don't have the other Blu-ray, I might as well unbox it. Well, not an unboxing, but just kind of show this off a little spotlight video, if, if you will. So it does come here, The House That Scream, with a classic slip cover, if you will. I'll show you guys. There's not much to see on the back, just a bunch of special edition contents, a little bit brief plot summation of what the movie is about. So we can slip this bad boy out and we have the newly commissioned cover art. And for the first time in the history of the world, I like the fucking new commissioned art better than the original. And it is reversible. I'll show you guys what the reversible art does look like. But man, I actually really quite like this. Of course, you have uh, Christina Galbo, who is also in great movies like Let's Sleep in Corpses Lie, a.k.a. Living Dead at the Manchester Morgue. One of my all-time favorite zombie movies. And she's the lead in that. She's also the lead in this for a little while. I don't, I, I mean, slight spoiler there. But she's, she's the lead for most of this movie until we, we get towards the finale. But... She does a great job here, and I actually think putting her on the cover was a really smart idea because the initial artwork does not have her or any other actor or actress to be seen on the cover here, which is unfortunate. The movie is basically like a precursor to Suspiria, and even on the back here it says it's the the bastard child between Psycho and Suspiria. I don't know if I'd agree with that. I, I think it has elements of both of those movies, but I don't think that uh, the director, Narcisco Abanez Serrador, I don't think he was going for that type of feel especially wasn't going for a superior feel because the spirit hadn't even been done yet but i'm definitely going to get more into the movie itself when we do that show whenever that is whenever that blu-ray comes in but like i said i do like the newly commissioned artwork with christina galbo front and center i just really like her of course arrow stuff generally comes with a little booklet this one of course with mother and son of the academy which if you've seen this movie and then on the back i actually like you have a real image of them from MGM. This is an actual black and white still image from the movie that was shot back in the 19, late 1960s, released 1969, early 1970, depends on where you are in the country or around the world. But uh, you do have this cool little booklet. You do have some fun pictures, stuff like that. I always, I always like that, that Arrow does this too. I think it's a, a smart idea to kind of give yourself more knowledge on the film and things like that. And this was an interesting production because this was basically, of course, Narcisco Banya Serrado, he was a, a Spanish filmmaker. However, half the actresses and actors were Spanish, half of them were English. So depending on whichever dub you watch, some of the lips are going to match, some of the lips aren't going to match. I watched the, the Spanish dub, the uncut version, which there are two versions on this, of course. You do have the 90... I believe it's the 95 minute American cut, which is, is definitely cut down. And then you have, I think it's a 104 minute full length uncut. Yeah, no 90. I'm sorry. 105 minute uncut. 94 is the U S cut of this. And I watched the uncut Spanish dub and it, it's true. It's funny. Some of the people you could clearly tell are speaking Spanish and you could clearly tell some people are speaking English, which I thought was really funny. I was like, Oh geez, like what are the odds of that? But yeah, no, I, like I said, this booklet is really cool. They tell you a little bit about the transfer, the restoration on the back here. This is a movie that was scanned in 4K, and then now it's a 2K 
Blu-ray. Thing looked pretty good. It's not a film with. It's hard to. It, there's definitely visuals in the film, but it's not that vibrant of a movie. It's pretty much all taking place in this academy. There are some interesting techniques when it comes to using color and stuff like that. There's a sequence where one of the girls she goes off to have sex with the gardener, and of course, Narcisco Banyas or other he couldn't show them having sex in the movie. So basically what he had to do was he showed the other girls jealous reactions. And that's a whole sequence in the film that I really quite enjoyed. And actually they got his son, Narcisco's son to do an interview on this. And he discusses his father's entire career and what he likes about this movie in particular and stuff like that. And he actually also mentioned that scene too. And I was like, wow, great minds think alike because that scene to me was one of the standouts of this film and how he went about tackling that. It was cool to hear the backstory and how he really couldn't show, you know, all that, that sex stuff. So instead he kind of had to imply it. And I thought he did a good job of implying it. However, Arrow, when it comes to Arrow, they always come out with these little mini posters that I really like as well. And I'll, this is where I'll show you guys the reversible, the original cover art, which I, again, I don't like it as much as the, the newly commissioned, which is, I'm telling you, it's the first time ever. This is the original cover art, this little poster here. One by one, they will die. Only the killer knows why and how and who is next. The house that screamed. Yes. It, this is cool. I don't mind this. I actually think it's nice. And I like, of course, purple text. Sucker for purple text. I think that's all. It's actually not that purple, though. Could be brown. I, I'm slightly colorblind, so maybe maybe it's brown. I don't know. On the camera, it looks purple, but in person, it looks brown. I don't know how to explain that. Maybe somebody else could clear that up for me. But, of course, and if you flip it over, you get the newly commissioned The House That Screen, Christina Galbo, front and center. I like this better. For some reason, I, and it's never, ever happened. Usually what I do is... If I don't like the newly commissioned artwork better than the OG, which is pretty much every single time except this, what I do is I flip it to the original on here, and then I have the newly commissioned on here. However, they did an interesting thing where this is newly commissioned and as is this, and basically you can't really have that option. And not giving me that option, I'm sticking new and new because it goes together good, and I actually prefer this this artwork so i don't know i thought that was pretty cool pretty cool the nice special edition i don't believe it's going for crazy money it just got released about a week or so ago from arrow video and like i said i do think they're the best in the game i really do i believe that i watched the movie twice actually i watched the spanish uncut version twice i did not watch the the cut u.s theatrical cut but Overall, I think this is a really awesome movie and I'm excited to get into it more in depth because I will review this fairly soon. It was supposed to be this Thursday, but I don't know if shit happens and, and the Who Can Kill a Child Blu-ray got back order from Mondo Macabre. So I don't know when that's coming in. Whenever it does, though, then I will be doing this and I'll also be covering the um, Historias Para No Dormir, which was the Spanish version of The Twilight Zone that got him his start, Narcisco's start in the business. He started on that show, which was like a Spanish version of The Twilight Zone. I have that complete series. That was released from Severn Films, and I quite like most of the episodes I've watched on that already. There's like 30. I think I've gotten to like a little over half. They're a little bit longer. They're about an hour. Some of them could be almost an hour and 30 minutes. Like some of them could be feature length. So that's why it's hard to kind of binge that particular show. But I'll be getting to that show, this movie, and of course, Who Can Kill a Child when we do do that special. But I just wanted to give a brief Blu-ray spotlight video to The House That Screamed from 1969, 1970, depending on where you check. And I'll throw this up on the channel. Just something to tide you over. This week, we will instead be doing an audible show of overrated versus underrated horror. I put up a post on Instagram, and I guess I could put one up here. You guys, if you want, I'll put on the post in the community tab. If you can let me know what movies you find overrated, underrated, in between, stuff like that. We definitely, I always like to hear people's thoughts and opinions and stuff like that. So be, be staying tuned for that. I'm super excited for that. And we will catch you next time only on The Graveyard. Two sweet peace. Bye-bye.